did two very significant things in my mind. One of them was the decision to keep this grant house as an office. And that was quite a hard decision because we were still very young and the responsibility of owning land and taking care of the, the building and taking the electricity and all that sort of stuff was really something to consider. But the board went for it and we started a process of literally thousands of volunteer hours to um, clean up and clean up the place and get it all tidied up for, for occupation. But I think it's given us a, uh, a solidity and sort of a standing, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. Certainly a sense of and a focus for, for all our volunteers and all our activities. And the second thing we did, which I think was a very smart move, was to partner with the uh, Community Foundation to handle our finances. Because we were a bunch of amateurs, I mean, we didn't really know what we were doing in terms of money. <coughs> Excuse me. And we were talking about raising a lot of money and having some pretty large assets. So having done that has really helped, I think. Mm -hmm. I, if you want my, my, my pick out of many things that um, you could think of, I, I, I remember very vividly when I was meeting with the Vermont Land Trust people, um, they talked about how their sort of long-term objective was, was to become the, um, the kind of community-based organization that people look to um, in the same way that the analogy they used was, you know, if, if, uh, if you have health issues, you go to your local hospital, right? And that's your local hospital and very important to you. If you have issues around the protection of nature, the protection of the environment, you should go, to, you know, you should be able to go to your local land trust. That should be top of mind for you when you think about what do we need to do to protect nature, you know, you know well, call a Vermont Land Trust or whatever. Um, and I think to a large extent we've, we've been able to achieve that over the last 30 years. Is I think there's, there's enough awareness in the community that um, even people who would never become members or, you know, not, not even necessarily financial supporters, but they're aware that the Conservancy is there and doing things, generally aware of what the Conservancy does, and, and generally very positive about that. Um, and I, I think, you know, as we, as we get more properties and, you know, they have opportunities to go out and, and you know, walk their dog around Grants Woods or, um, you know, around the, the properties up around Washago or, you know, any number of uh, properties that we have within our purview. Um, that all helps to build that kind of community support. Yes. Uh, so, it's I think true. that's, when, you, when, you, when I think about, you know, longevity and um, the ability of the organization to sustain itself over the long term, I think that kind of community awareness and and, um, and support is is so important. Yeah, and it was it was really those ten people who were establishing that. I mean, the land can't speak, but yeah. the those ten people I think established um, a respectability and legitimacy to the conservancy, which remains today. Um, yeah, and it, I mean, we did some of it deliberately and some of it probably accidentally, but it, it all has snowballed and cascaded down to what we have today. And I think in, there were some very significant decisions made, um, even uh, then, knowingly or unwittingly, that uh, established that climate that is so strong still.